Good day, my lovely students, like I popularly call you, my literature scholars. It's quite an age. Sincerely, I must confess, I miss you all. But what can we do? I believe God knows best. And by special grace, we'll meet in peace. Today, we're going to look at one of our poems. It's a non-African poetry. And the title of the poem is Bisney Poplars, written by Gerard Manley Hopkins. It's a non-African poetry, like I said, and the title is Business Poplars by Gerard Manley Hopkins. I believe you have missed my voice. I want us to first read the poem. You know, the best way to appreciate a poem, you still remember, is by what? Is by reading it aloud. Listen to being say, to Gerard, Gerard as he talks about the Bensi poplars. My aspens there, whose airy cages curled, curled or quenched in leaves the leaping sun, all felt, felt, a whole felt, of a fresh and following folded rank, no spare, not spared, not one that dandled a sandaled shadow that swam or sank a middle and river and wind wandering with windling winding bank how oh, if we but knew what we what we do when we delve or hew hack and rock the growing grain. Since country is so tender, to touch her being so slender, that's like the slick and thin ball, but a prick will make no eye at all. Where we, even where we, we mean to mend her, we hand her. When we who or delve, after commas cannot guess the beauty then. Ten or twelve, only ten or twelve. Ten or twelve, only ten or twelve strokes of avoc on self, the sweet especial scene, rural scene, a rural scene, sweet especial rural scene. This poem is on page 398 of your exam focus. If you look at the first line of the poem, it started with a loving note. My Aspen dear. My Aspen dear. It is a loving note. At least you all know what a dear connotes. It connotes love. It connotes affection, something you love. But the first thing we should ask ourselves, what does this aspen, what does this stand for? Yes, it is a tree. A brand of the poplar tree. So let us see from the beginning of the poem that the poet is trying to prefer his love for a particular tree which is the aspen tree. So that is why it started, it starts, sorry, it starts on that note, my aspen dear. My aspen dear. 
That is a note of love, a note of affection, a note of whatever you want to call it, but love is in the hair. Who's airy cages quelled? Look at what the poet states, says again. He says, who's airy cages? Who's airy cages quelled? He's trying to show us or to tell us the importance, how important this tree is to him. If you look at the beginning and what this poem is all about, you will see that Gerard is a lover of nature. He loves nature. And he doesn't, he's not, he's not hiding his feelings. His love for nature is clearly evident in the way he shows his love. My Aspen dear. It is like calling a particular tree that my dear Iroko tree. Individually, if you love nature, there will be a particular plant that you just love seeing. So if you see such plants being cut down or be affected by something unpleasant, you feel bad. That is the feeling of this poet in this poem. I can tell you that this poem there are two, two ways to eat. The poet here is trying to show us his love for nature. His love for nature is clearly evident, and it is also a dirge. The poem is also a dirge. Yes, you know what a dirge means? A mournful song. The poet is mourning. Yes, he's sorrowful. If you read through, if you read on, I will need you to follow with your textbooks, your exam focus, so that you will be able to, to follow the poem line by line. He says, my aspen there, whose airy cage is quelled, quelled or quenched in leaves the leaping sun of a fresh and following folded rank. I said, the poem is a dirge for a landscape known so well by the poet. A dirge for a landscape. A dirge for a landscape known so well. Known so well by the author, by the poet rather. He's familiar with the tree. He has fallen in love with it at a particular time or the other. But when, um, when it is time for all this modernization, when it sets in, they need to, to build bridges, they need to build roads. So automatically, his lover, which is the aspen tree, is not spared. They, are, they tampered with nature just to get the, the country or the area developed. And the poet is not happy with this. That is why he's singing a dirge, a sorrowful poem in remembrance of his love for the tree, for the aspen tree. Let's see the fifth line. Sorry, one, two, three, four. Yes, the fifth line. Not spared, not worn. They've cut down the trees. They did not even bother to spare him one. You know, something you love, gradually, they're taking it away. They're taking it away. But they, they refuse to even leave you with one. At least if there is one, the memory will still be there. Not one, not spared. All are taken down. All in the name of what? All in the name of modernization. We need to build bridges. We need to build roads. And his lover, his lovely trees are taken away. You can just imagine the feeling of the poet. So let's move on. Shadow that swam or sank. 
shadow that swam or sank on middle and river and wind wandering weed winding bank. Seal is not the only one that is enjoying these trees. The tree is even the trees even contribute to the natural pattern pattern along the banks of the river. You know, you have seen trees at the banks of rivers. You know the shade, the comfort that people that get underneath it, the comfort that they derive. You can imagine yourself coming on from a scorching sun, and you get you just get to the river bank, and you see trees. And the shadow underneath, underneath the shadow, you are able to rest. I want you to imagine the comfort you will derive from resting under the tree. So the, the, the poet is trying to let us know that this intrusion, this, the way they have cut down the lifespan of these trees actually affects the shadow enjoyed at the river, at the river banks. Oh, if we but knew what we do. Ha! Ah, he's trying to, you can see that the use of that pronoun, he has involved himself in it. He knows he's part of them. Yes, at least the trees are cut down by people. So that is why in the second stanza, you will see how we started. Oh, if we but knew what we do. He knows he's not exempted. They all want to improve. They all want good roads. They want technology, advancement of technology. So that is why he tries to inculcate himself. He tries to bring himself to the scene that I am not innocent of it. But what he's trying to say is, we don't know the extent of the damage we have done to nature by cutting down these trees. That is why he says, oh, if we but knew what we do, when we delve or heal, you know, delving is uprooting. We don't know the extent of the damage. When we uproot these trees, when we cut these lives short, because in the trees, he sees life. Yes, in this aspen trees, the poet sees life. That is why he's trying to show his, his sorrow. He's, he tries to put it down in writing. How sorrowful he feels. Oh, if we but knew what we do, when we delve or heal, hack and rack the growing grain. He knows, you might not know the extent of the damage now, but because of his love for nature, he knows that what they are doing hmm, is not good enough. Cutting down these trees and even not leaving any of them alive is not good enough. So that is what he's trying to say here. Since country is so tender, to touch air being so slender, that like this leak and same ball, but a prick will make no eye at all. A prick will make no eye at all. If you look at that line, you will see, he wants them to see the extent of the pain that this, this action causes him or even the entire nature. That is why he uses the eye in this line. It says, but a prick will make no eye at all. If you take your nails now and you try to prick your hair, your eye rather, you can imagine the pain that will be felt. The, the eye is so tender that you just can't touch anyhow. So that is why he uses that part of the body to show the extent of the damage. He sees the aspen tree as being too, so tender as the eye, and by cutting it down, it is like pricking the eye. And if the eye is prickled, you know the pain that will be felt. Where we even, where we mean to mend her, 
we hand her. Let's see that line. To mend her, we hand her. Look at that. To mend her, we hand her. At least what they are trying to do in that area at that particular time is to bring about development. Is to make the environment beautiful. But by so doing, with their intention to beautify the environment, they end up doing what? Ending the, the real beauty of nature in the environment. Yes, they're able to, breed, to build bridges. Yes, they're able to build roads. But they have actually cut down or tampered nature by cutting down these trees. So to, end, to mend her, we hand her. We are trying to beautify, to, to, to beautify our environment. But at the end, we end up doing what? Killing the lives, which refers to the aspen trees. When we heal or delve, after commas cannot guess the beauty being. This is another thing that is making him sad. Fine, we have seen it at a particular time. But what of the people that are coming after us? Will they see it? The remembrance has been cut short. It has been cut out of memory. In such a, to, to the extent that those coming, the coming generation will not see the beauty of nature that these trees offer. That is why he says, after commas cannot guess the beauty being, that is the beauty in the past that those trees give. He said, 10 or 12, only 10 or 12 strokes of avoc on self. 10 or 12, only 10 or 12 of avoc on self. Let's see the last three stanzas. The sweet, uh, sorry, the last three lines, rather. The sweet, especial sin. Rural sin, a rural sin. Sweet, especial, rural sin. You will see a form of repetition in these last three lines. But the point is actually trying to tell us, to let us feel is numb in comprehension, that, oh, sorry, is numb grief and his unwillingness to let go of the trees. Yes, the deed has been done. But the last three lines is just showing us how grieved the poet is. He's not happy. He's even, he even finds it difficult to let go of the trees. Though, the trees have gone, but he's still holding on to the memory. By so doing, he still keeps it afresh in his heart, and he finds it difficult to let go. His unwillingness to let go of the memory. So that is the poem. I believe it's a bit interesting. I want you to study the poem, you know. I will always do it. I believe by the time you start, by the time you study it, you will get more, you, you will get more explanation to it other than the one given to you here. But while you do that, line by line, you will see there are a lot of figurative expressions in this poem. I want you to look at it, analyze it line by line, by line and bring out the figures of speech in each of the lines. You know how we do it. Please do it like that and pen it down because I will see it, I will check it by the special grace of God when school resumes. So, till then, or till the next class, stay safe.